if you're comfortable in so doing, I invite you to stand to greet the family. Good morning and welcome to Ogallala United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Chuck and I invite you to join the family for a time of lunch and fellowship after the meal or after the service. A couple of things I want to uh, give you by word of instruction and I will try to repeat them at the end of the service. If you are going downstairs for lunch, we would ask if you would please go down by way of the south stairwell. There is an elevator there for those who might find that helpful. If you are not able to stay for lunch and fellowship, we would ask for free flowing traffic to occur. If you would exit by way of the north door out here that faces the police station and ushers would be happy to direct you there. The ladies downstairs are prepared to serve each and every one of you a wonderful meal. There is plenty of food, so all are invited to come and, as I said, go down the south, south stairwell for lunch together. I would also ask if you have any cell phones, unless you're expecting a call from God, to please turn them off or to silent at this time. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we invite your Holy Spirit to come and to be a part of our gathering. Fill each heart, each mind, and each soul with your presence. Bring your comfort and give it to each and every one who is assembled here and to those who watch with us by way of the live streaming elsewhere. May your Spirit unite us and abide with us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first scripture reading I have for you this morning comes from the book of Genesis. So here are these words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. 
In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Amen. At this time, Joel is going to share in the song, Amazing Grace. Thank you, Joel. I love the version of that song. And thank you, Carla, for accompanying him. Dr. James Jim Plate was born June 6, 1949, in Ord, Nebraska, 
to Willis and Rhoda Plate. He received his early education at Sumter Country School, a rural one-room schoolhouse through eighth grade, and he graduated from Ord High School. Jim spent his youth growing up on a horse on the family farm or ranch outside of North Loop. He was active in 4-H, winning champion honors at the Nebraska State Fair for market lambs, and he was named the Outstanding Cowboy at the Ord J.C. Rodeo in 1967. In high school, he played trombone as a member of the Sill Boroughs Polka Club. Jim graduated from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree with dual majors in chemistry and physiology and a minor in mathematics. He received his Doctor of Medicine degree from the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha. He did a rotating internship at Deaconess Hospital in Spokane, Washington, and was board certified in family practice medicine. He was united in marriage to Rebecca Becky Larson on August 21st, 1976 in Ogallala. And to this union, three children were born, Michael, Megan, and Danny. The family resided in Kimball until 1998 where Dr. Plate served as chief of staff for Kimball Health Services off and on for 20 years and he helped shape the Kimball Ambulance and EMS services. He participated in the UNMC Preceptor Program, training many students in rural medicine. For several years, he was the only physician in Kimball. Well, it's hard to get a night off. <laughs> in 1998, the family moved to Ogallala, where Dr. Plate was employed by Family Medical Center until his retirement in 2014. In 2007, he participated in a three-week medical mission trip to Haiti. Jim was an avid sportsman who enjoyed fishing and hunting with his family and close friends. Bird hunting was more than a casual hobby as he passionately raised and trained pointing dogs for over 40 years. I asked him once if he could make a list of the names of all those dogs for me. I thought that would be a cool list to have. He loved fly fishing in the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming. He was a private pilot for more than 20 years, flying his own plane when time didn't allow for driving, and he was also an avid golfer. Later in life, he often spent time on the family farm, preserving the land for hunting habitat, restoring the farmhouse he grew up in, and building two special ponds to take his granddaughters fishing. In addition to the sporting life, Jim enjoyed playing bridge, road trips with family, and dancing with Becky, whether or not there was music playing. Jim was a member of this church, of the Sigma Chi fraternity and the Elks Lodge 1760, the Banner Capital Bank Board of Directors, the Banner County Banner Corporation Board of Directors, and the trustee of Banner County Band Corporation, ESOP. Those who traveled on ahead of Jim from this earth include his parents, his brother Paul Plate, and his infant sister, Deanna Plate. Among those left to continue the journey here without him includes his wife, Becky of Ogallala, two sons, Michael of Alma, and Dan and his wife, Jessica, of Houston, Texas. One daughter, Megan, and her husband, Jeff Olsop, of Grapevine, Texas. One brother, Bill Plate, and his wife, Karen, of North Loop. And two granddaughters, Lily and Grace Olsop, of Grapevine, Texas. Today, we gather together to remember Jim, to give thanks for the life that he enjoyed here on this earth, to give thanks for the privilege of having had the opportunity to share some time with him here. And we also gather together to give thanks for the love and the grace and the life that is offered to all through our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Jim Plate. 
Well, I know that there are others who have more memories to share, and his daughter Megan is going to speak on behalf of the family. So Megan, if you would come over, please, and share some thoughts and memories, please. to summarize the life of a man like my dad in just a few words. But, as I have tried to think about what best describes and characterizes him, I keep coming back to this. My dad loved living. Everything he did was done with a passion and enthusiasm that surpassed anyone I have ever known. He wasn't just a doctor. He was the doctor. He practiced family medicine, delivered babies, performed surgery, and provided healing to hundreds of people all while greeting everyone he met with an infectious smile and kind words. He carried himself with such dignity and confidence. He wore a suit and tie to work, and he loved a white lab coat. I remember the feeling of walking into his office and seeing him and just being so proud that he was my dad. He was always learning and challenging himself and trying something new, and he loved sharing his knowledge with others. He was a phenomenal teacher, both to countless medical students and to his adoring daughter. I see his thirst for knowledge, the same twinkle in the eye, and that strong will of nature reflected back to me every day as I watch his oldest granddaughter navigate her way through life with grace, kindness, stubbornness, and brilliance, just like her papa. He took his hobbies seriously and made it a priority to spend time with his friends and family doing what he loved. He was a sports aficionado, but he didn't just sit back and watch. He coached my brothers and me in softball, baseball, basketball, and golf. He loved to ski and just took us on countless trips to the mountains in the winter. And every summer, we would spend a week in Estes Park, riding go-karts, fishing at the little lake, and eating all the good food. He loved spending time on the farm, and watching him teach my daughter to fish will remain one of the great highlights of my life. In Proverbs 17.22, we read that a joyful heart is good medicine. My dad loved living, and he did so with great joy, humor, and a song in his heart. I'm pretty sure my dad lived with a soundtrack playing in his head. He loved to sing, even when he didn't know the words, which, let's be honest, was most of the time. He whistled everywhere he went. He never just told you happy birthday. He sang it to you loudly and with great embellishment. And he was always dancing. And if you ever have the opportunity to watch my parents dance, you will know his one great love in life. What my dad truly loved, above all else, was living life with my mom. The profound admiration and affection my dad possessed for my mom was beyond comparison. Their love and respect for one another shaped our family and will continue to impact our collective families for generations to come. One other thing about him was that he always gave good advice. If you were ever struggling with something, as we all do at times, you could call him and he would find a way to help. He wasn't going to solve your problems for you, but he would provide you with thoughts, experiences, and wisdom to help you find a solution, even if it was a difficult one. And if he was to give us all advice on this day and every day after, we believe it would be this, be joyful. He wanted this time today to be a time of celebration, not of mourning. I pray that if he is watching, he would know that the tears we cry are because we loved him so very, very much. And life will never be the same without him in it. But we press on, and we attempt to honor him by living with that same passion, that same zeal. To be joyful is to be ready to greet others with a welcome, a word of encouragement, an enthusiasm for the task at hand, and a positive outlook on the future. Thank you, everyone, all of you, for being here today to celebrate my dad. And now, I invite you to join in the celebration of a life well-lived, a man well-loved. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. You mentioned what a great teacher he was, but you forgot to mention that one great lesson he taught you on how to properly wash a car. <laughs> and I invite all of you to ask Megan how she learned to wash a car when you join the family for lunch downstairs. Deb, I invite you to come and share some thoughts and memories. My name is Deb Childress, and I started working with Dr. Plate in 1977. 
I have met so many stories of this great man. As I knew, I know many of you today have some wild stories. I wish we could hear them all. I was around for all the plate babies to be born. And when Megan was born, I was working in the nursery. When it was time to go home, I carried her out to the car with her parents. When we got to the back door of the hospital, Dr. Plate says, stop, let Megan down, let her walk to daddy. She can do it. <laughs> In his eyes, she could do anything. Over the years, Jim and I had many conversations about our kids, sports, school, and all the trouble they could get into. He was a great listener, and he did have awesome advice. Dr. Plate had a PA for many years, Carrie Mayhew, and those two were animals. They would work all day in the clinic and then to the hospital for surgeries till early hours in the morning, and then back to the clinic the next day to start it all over again. Kimball was so lucky to have such a great